Good morning, and welcome to St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church. My name is Marshall Lang, and the second reader is Irene Potocinik. Our celebrant for this Mass is Monsignor Bill. Today's second collection is for the Catholic Relief Services. We're happy to announce the nursery is open during the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Masses on Sundays. It is currently open for children aged one month to three years. The nur nursery is located in the Family Center, and it is a free service offered by the parish. Please silence your cell phones. Let us quiet our hearts and minds as we place ourselves in the presence of the Lord in this sacred place. From the first days of creation, humans took advantage of their free will and sinned against God. But God so loved the world that he sent the Son to be born into the world, to suffer and die, to atone once and for all for our sins, and to be raised up so that we all may have eternal life. The Holy Spirit draws us here each week to allow us to express our love for God in a way that we worship God and the way that we treat each other. On this Latari Rejoice Sunday, we're reminded of God's unparalleled love and mercy and ultimate purpose for us all. In a moment of silence, let's remember we gather as one body to pray the great prayer of thanksgiving we call Eucharist. Our opening hymn is Christ Be Our Light in the Worship Aid and number 590 in the Gather Hymnal. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, <coughs> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way grant we pray that with uh, prompt devotion and eager faith this Christian people may hasten toward this toward the solemn ceremonies to come through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion for his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God despised his warnings and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all the palaces of fire and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captain to Babylon where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All of this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land was retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lay, lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. 
Verbum Domini. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept, remembering Sion on the poplars that grew there, we hung up our harps. It was there that they asked us, our captors, for songs, our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Sion's songs. How could we sing the song of the Lord on foreign soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not if I prize not Jerusalem as the first of my joys. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus that in ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. Verbum Domini, Deo gratias.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. When God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe that he, then he has already been condemned because he did not believe in the name of the Son of God. And this is the, the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does th wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, and so his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. Evangelium Domini. Eons ago, when I was a teenager, I'm getting older, I remember watching a football game in the, in the 60s, and uh, I got a, it was, it was kind of interesting. I said, who's talking about the Bible during the football game? And that, the guy had the big sign up here, and it's, you know, John 3, 16. <laughs> And I said, what was that? And that's what we heard today in the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So I was introduced uh, in my memory from this part of the gospel of the great promise a prophecy that, that Jesus gave in, in his uh, talk with uh, Nicodemus. And it was interesting with Nicodemus. It was and at night. He was, he was so afraid of talking with Jesus because Jesus was a radical guy. Uh, and we all should be radicals, by the way. Uh, but he was, didn't want to be seen with Jesus because the Sanhedrin... He was one of the members there, the ruling class, that they would, he would be somehow thrown out or whatever it might be. But we now know and we hear this all the time, this uh, John 3.16. But I want to talk a little bit about what's said just before this one. The verse just before this one. Uh, and, and it's extremely important when... Uh, Jesus says to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of, God, of Man. He be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. You know, in the book of Numbers, if you go back in the Old Testament, the, the, the uh, Jewish people, the Israelites, were being uh, very contentious. And they started to they get into a time when there was a, a lot of seraph serpents. Uh, seraph means uh, fiery and, and biting. And it was a very, very difficult time. They would bite the people. Some of the people were starting to die. And so Moses goes to God and says, what do I do? 
They, they, they were complaining. They were seeing these, these uh, bad things happening. So, ju- so God says, well, I want you to make a, serp- a, a model of the serpent, mount it on a pole, and then all those, all those people who see that and look at that, they will be cured. And it's so it happened that way. People were cured just by looking at what God put, put there before him. So it's a precursor or kind of setting up what Jesus is saying about, I have to be raised up. So must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. That's what we hear today. And, and yes, we know about this, God so loved the world, but they forget it's also the Son of Man being lifted up, which means on the cross. That's what it means to be lifted up. And, you know, we have a difficult world. There's a lot of things that, that go wrong. People die, people get sick, there's wars, uh, we lose money, all kinds of things like that. It's not a nice, calm, you know, life. It's, it's a tough life at times. And yet, what are we called to do? We're called to do the same thing that happened in the desert back with Moses. When these things happen, what we need to do is we need to turn and look at the one who was lifted up. That, that's what we're asked to do, to lift up and look at the cross. That's where our salvation is. We have to keep coming, coming back to that. A long time ago, uh, St. Peter Christologus wrote this, and I thought it was very profound. Why do you have so low opinion of yourself when you are so precious to God? Why do you dis- dishonor yourself when you are honored, so honored by God? Why do we do that? You know, we think uh, something's wrong with us. We, have, we get sickness. We, we, my business didn't work right or, or all kinds of things. And we start to have this whole thing about having a very poor self-image of ourselves. Because we think many times, maybe most of the time, we think, well, if I can be successful, if I can go to the right school, if I can get the right diploma, if I can make this job, and on and on and on like this, that I'll have self-worth. No, no, that's not true. Our self-worth comes from God. That's, that's where we have to look for our self-esteem, not the things here on earth. These are passing things. We should never, ever have a bad uh, image of ourselves. Now, if we have been sinful, et cetera, et cetera, well, we have a remedy for that, confession, et cetera. But when we have, have these down moments, when these things don't seem to go so right, we have to look at him. That's where our cure is, right there. And, you know, none of us, not one person in here, not one human being in the history of humanity suffered like he did. Well, Monsignor, I've, I've, I've lost my friends. Well, Jesus did that. That happened to him. He was abandoned. Some of his closest people walked away, betrayed him. The, 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 the physical pain of, of, of crucifixion. The Romans made an art of it. And it was terrible. 
a terrible way to die. He's hanging totally naked on a piece of wood. People would walk by and spit on him and call him names. He even said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All of that. And yet he said, your will, not mine. We have to allow ourselves to be on the cross with Christ. And the reason that we come to Mass is not so much to go to, to receive communion, which is a great gift, but we are here at the cross now. We are here on Calvary. Every Mass, every Mass is a representation Pre, uh, 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 showing again of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that's why we come to Mass. That's the reason that we go on the cross with Christ and we are there with him. That's, that's the joy that we are with him on the cross at that saving moment and it's hard it's hard sometimes to do that and one of the things that we want to think about and is really powerful is to remember in uh, something that Saint Ignatius of Loyola wrote and he was talking about when we get into these times of our lives when it all seems to be going down 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 downhill we have to practice adjure contra. Adjure contra. I've talked about this a few times. Anybody remember what that is? Oh. It means to act against yourself. We have to act against ourselves. Not, not in, a, in, a, in a terrible way, but to say, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to get up and come to church on Sunday. We have to, you know, get up anyway. We go against what our body is telling us what to do. You ever go on a diet? Same thing. You have to, you have to work against yourself. You can't keep having all that flan and ice cream. Not if you're going to go on a diet. You act against yourself. Well, what happens when uh, you know, my, my uh, friends are gone? I've got a bad disease. I just want to give up. No, you act against yourself. If you fall down, you get up. Well, I don't like to speak in front of people. Well, then you go out and you speak in front of them anyway. You look fear in the eye. You do not do this. That is not what Jesus did. And we have this great Sunday of joy because we walk into the fire, not run away from it. We stand for truth when we'd rather tell a lie. We pray when we'd rather not. And it goes on and on like that. That's why this is Laetare Sunday, a Sunday of joy. And when we walk and we work against ourselves, we can have that joy. But we have to look up here. We'll never have the joy that we are ready to have from God is when we Look to him in all times. So let us, as we come to communion today, see, I'm going to be with Christ on the cross. Yes. I'm going to suffer with Christ. Yes. And even when we think God has abandoned us, we look there. Say, no, he would never do that.
He would never do that. Let us be lifted on the cross with Christ so that we can be with him for all eternity. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident that our loving Father will hear and answer our prayers, we offer... Uh, the, the, who answer the prayers we offer, let us turn to him with our petitions. For Pope Francis, Daniel, our bishop, and all clergy, that they may be strengthened and fortified by our prayers as they guide us along our journeys of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, that they may always speak and act in the light of truth and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who is rich in mercy, will bless those called by Jesus to serve him and his church as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life with faithfulness to their vocations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing to receive sacraments, that they may come to know Christ more each day and be open to his grace and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God's unending love and mercy will bring them health and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed spirit of stewardship, that we may efficiently use God's gift entrusted to us and work to share them with those who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed loved ones, especially Sonia Tudela, Jessica Tan, and Hedy Lee, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way at this Mass for our parishioners of St. Vincent de Paul, and for the prayers we offer now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, as you hear our prayers, grant that we may follow the life-giving words of your Son, Jesus the Christ, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And just a reminder that our second collection today is for the Catholic Relief Services. It is a, a service that goes to, all around the world in spots for, to help, uh, especially after uh, floods and uh, storms, etc. Please be generous. Please join as the hymn in the preparation of the gifts. Number 681 in the Gather Hymnal, we remember as well as the worship aid.
Let us pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We, praise, we place before you with these joyful offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both be faithful and revere them and present them to you as, as a fitting uh, for, salvation, for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewal and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disorder affections, they may be so devoted, they may so deal with the things of this passing world so as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you and without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Samaon, Plenis Sunceli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Praise you, Jesus, my Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Praise you, Jesus, my Lord. Mysterium Fidei. Fortem Tuam, Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuam, Resurrectionem Confitei. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, Daniel, our bishop, his assisting bishop, Italo, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the, bless <clears throat> with the blessed Mary, Vir Virgin Mother of God, her, your blessed, uh, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Vincent de Paul, St. Bernadette, and all the saints who have pleased you without th throughout the ages, that we may be merited to be co-heirs to eternal light, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom glory are you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer to those around us a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Join in the communion hymn, Bread of Life from Heaven, number 943 in the hymnal, also found in the worship aid, number 943. <coughs>
second communion song is number 482 in the Gather Hymnal, The Cross of Jesus, number 482.
Let us pray. O God, who enlightened everyone who comes, who comes into the world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all, in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. We have one of our guys from uh, the Axe Retreat, if you come on, <coughs> come on up. Oh, we got two of them. Oh, the Bopsy Twins. Two of us. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, uh, Monsignor Bill, for giving us this opportunity to speak today. My name is Robert Burgess, and this young man is Mike Monks. Right here. <laughs> and we're with the Men's Axe Retreat. And we're here to tell you about our exciting retreat. ACTS stands for Adoration, Community, Theology, and Service. It is a four-day, three-night Catholic retreat for men designed to reignite our faith and bring us into a closer relationship with God and our community here at St. Vincent de Paul. This retreat is an amazing experience, and we want to invite the men of our parish to experience, experience it with us. Oh, is it my turn? Uh, first of all, if anybody does not know me, uh, I'm Mike Monks, and as Monsignor said, there are some people who are afraid to speak in public. I'm one of them. Anyway, I'm gonna need your help just for a second. We have a men's and a women's retreat, and I wanna ask, all those folks who have been on an axe retreat before to please raise your hand. Robert, that's oh, you too, brother. All right, please raise, higher, <laughs> okay? All right, so we have uh, uh, some folks that have. Now, all of those who have not been on an axe retreat, please raise your hand. <laughs> Robert, we've got plenty of work to do. <laughs> this retreat is gonna be held on the weekend of April the 28th. Our theme this year is to love one another. We can only take a limited number of retreatants and the spots will fill up fast. We can take about 50 and we have 22 spots that are spoken for right now. In fact, Louis Moronis, a good friend of mine and his son Timothy were the first two to sign up this year. So if you're interested in coming or know someone who is, we will be in the church foyer also called the Narthex for whatever reason, after mass with registration forms and to answer questions. The cost of the retreat is $250. And I think that might be the very best deal you ever get in your life because how much is your eternal soul worth? There is financial aid that is available for those folks who cannot afford the full price. And once again, I want you to know that we thank you and we ask that God bless you. And we know the people of the team who will be there with you have been praying every Thursday since January that you will open your hearts and join us on this special retreat. Monsignor, thank you once again for giving us the time to talk. You're welcome. Uh, are there any spouses in here Wives uh, who's had a husband go to Axe Retreat, raise your hands. A few of them are here, okay? Uh, talk to them because they'll tell you why your husband should actually go, okay? They come back much nicer. So I'm told, so I'm told. I don't have a spouse except you're, you're my spouse. A lot of you. <laughs> um, Please pray for, for, for vocations. Uh, you can go to the website, uh, call, call the office, and uh, get the traveling crucifix in your home for a week to pray for vocations. Also, join us for Stations of the Cross this Friday. Uh, English here in the church and uh, Spanish in the, in the chapel. And then just trot over to the cafeteria and the Knights of Columbus wonderful uh, 
fish fry, and it's not just fried fish, it's also baked fish, uh, which is a tilapia, if I'm not mistaken. It's really very, very good. Uh, the Girl Scouts are selling some uh, cookies today. Uh, they're, they, please uh, support them, uh, the, the troops and our uh, gr groups for our, here, here in the parish. And uh, if you've never had them, they're delicious. Uh, and if you get the thin mints and put them in the freezer for a little while, mm, so good, so good. Uh, this is a very important announcement here. Please be aware that our parish would never make such an appeal to individual parishioners. See, sometimes we get these things uh, over the overnet, so, uh, the, the internet. Sometimes it's email, text, social media, and they say, you, know, you get something like, um, you have my name on it and say, look, I'm, I'm stranded here in Chicago. I need money to get a ticket. And No, we don't do that, okay? When you see things like that, do not send any money to anybody, any clergy here in this parish. Do not do that. We don't, we don't solicit that, okay? We don't solicit that. Um, and if you get one of those, please f in inform the, the, uh, par the parish office, and we can send out a little uh, note to this the scam is there. So it's, that's, be real careful when you're sending money uh, over, over the internet, etc. A lot of people get scammed. Uh, and so just please, please be very careful. And these people are doing that. They're getting better and better and, sh and shiftier and shiftier. So, uh, so please do not do that. Uh, if you want to give money, just put it in the collection, okay? That, then you know it's safe. But don't do it over the, over, don't get these things that I, I need money, okay? Or, or any of the priests, all right? So be thinking about that. And now we have entered the season of, of, of a misnomer season, daylight saving time. We save no light, okay? You get the same amount of light no matter where, where you put the clock, okay? It just doesn't, you don't get any extra uh, light. It just doesn't work. And one of those silly things. Now you know what I think of it. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ending. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join your voices in our closing hymn, Jerusalem, My Destiny, found in your worship aid and also in the hymnal 492.